screen. looked at your uh, post on uh, I'll pull up uh, Discord Bruce uh, I want to see the new pictures you posted okay so the new ones oh yeah Yeah, you, that headstock thing is crazy that you're doing. It's a great idea, actually, but it does make a lot of work for you. Um, I, Bruce, have you ever been to the, the Taylor Guitar Factory? Uh, they use lasers to cut everything, which is crazy. So, you know, if, if you were to... Oh, I got, I've got I've to close this, unfortunately. Well, let me uh, grab an invite link. Uh, so the Discord page is a place where oftentimes it's con dis discuss it. Discussion continues. Uh, we've only got 12 people on and are probably all the faithfuls. I see Ed and Jim and Roger and Bruce. Oh, John, how's it going, John? Good evening to you as well. You can see the sun is shining tonight. <laughs> Here's at 9 a.m. on California in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, I'm going to continue talking about this because uh, this is a big a lot. This is a lot to, to bite off, um, and the, the whole um, the whole premise of this series. Oh, you know what? That's one thing I want to go to and too. While I'm at thinking of it, is go to uh, YouTube and delete all the ads on the last video. I apologize again. I apologize for anyone watching this video right now if they're watching it within the first forty eight hours of me uh, finishing it. Um. They're processing it, but they add all these ads, and I can't. I, I take. I get rid of them all. You're getting an, literally an ad every um, two minutes, and it drives me insane. Uh, I'm going to put an ad in every 30 minutes, which I feel is pretty fair, and I, I make a little bit from every time there's an ad. Okay, so there were 4,000 ads there. I deleted them all. I inserted one here at zero, one at 30, one at about one. I don't even look for breaks. It's too much you know, like logical breaks. <laughs> if I created a real long video and I, I generally, lately, a couple times I've actually created videos uh, that, you know, I know that if they're over 10 minutes, I can put an ad in there. And I have actually um, intentionally when I did create, you know, edit the video and put, I put a slide in there that maybe has a transition slide or whatever. I'll put the ad on that. Um, 
because that makes sense. And, and that way I can make a little bit more money. Um, revenues were up in October from the previous two months, which is good. Uh, way down from early in COVID because of COVID, for some reason, everything took off. Hey, Holly, good to see you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Charlie's here. Uh, Bruce, I said, hi. So Bruce has got a couple new pictures. Hey, Ben, Mr. Benny is in the house. <laughs> I'm here, boss. Um, it got, oh, freezing. Where are you? I forget where you are, John. Kenan, where are you in England? Um, if you're, it's, if you're saying good evening, I'm assuming you're in Europe somewhere. Um, I was looking at that. I, I, I taught a lesson with Cruz yesterday. Um, uh, Cruz Beckham, David and Victoria's son is my only student. And so we do like a, a FaceTime lesson and I was teaching him some theory stuff. Um, uh, and he's super, super sweet kid. Really nice. I mean, they, all, th all four of their kids are unbelievably sweet and nice and very very polite it's really really cute and their their uh their uh um you know accents of course are, are hilarious i harper especially the little girl it's like oh my god she's so cute so i i went over there one time and and i and cruz needed to uh, his guitar strings were awful they were so rusty on one of his guitars so i said i i brought a set over uh for the lesson, and I said, I'm gonna change strings on this guitar because it's just so not good. And uh, and uh, Harper wanted to help. So Harper sat on my shoes five, I think, and she she wanted to help it, made it take about five times longer, but she was so cute in her little, little British accent. Oh my gosh. So cute. So Harper and I changed strings on Cruz's guitar. And I would always bring some weird instrument for her to play, like a ukulele or something like that. I actually think I brought a um, ukulele and a charango or something. I don't know. Uh, but um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so it looks good, Bruce. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Wait, I got I to gotta look for uh, John's response. Oh. Yeah, ad block. Yeah, the problem with ad block, then, then I guess I don't get any revenue. But I understand that. I, I actually don't use ad block because I know how bloggers and things like that, how they make money. So, uh, if you post a link to that software, oh, <laughs> now everyone's going <laughs> to have ads. Um, so let's see. Okay. So one of the things, um, no, uh, oh, Chance the Rapper. Oh, no, the new one. No, that's actually this kid that uh, came to town. He's at like 19 years old and he wrote the guitar part to that. It's like crazy. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. He's, he's, he's got a charmed life already and a hit, a number one hit. Because that song was number one before Beaver sang on it. Um, let's see, uh, what else? <laughs> That's all right, Bruce. You can, you can block ads. I didn't know it worked on ads in within YouTube. That's interesting. I knew it would work on ads like pop-up ads or like sidebar ads. Um, mine, like if you put it into Chrome, it might not work. On, it'd be interesting to see if it works. I, and I did have an ad blocker. It, it was kind of jacking up sometimes. Sometimes it, certain pages wouldn't open for whatever reason. But um, okay, so um, so this this the concept here between um, that I've been doing, talking about three Mixolydian scales. The idea behind this is that you ultimately get down three Mixolydian scales for the three different chords in a blues progression, all in the same position. See, I could have just said, okay, here's a G mixolydian scale. And when it goes to C chord, just take it up to C and do the same scale, which you totally can do because these are all movable scales. Um, every one of these scales is so you know, if there's no open strings, they're 100% movable, which means you've learned 12 scales. This is G mixolydian. 
This is A flat mixolydian. This is A mixolydian. Oh, don't switch it up for me, John. <laughs> no. No, and especially if you're watching like the next day and it's got YouTube has inserted a billion ads. They literally every two minutes, I'm like, ah, stop it. And I don't know how to fix that, except as soon as they finish processing the video, I could log in. But I never know when that is. It could take 12 hours. It could take longer. So I've logged in, is, you know, eight hours after not done processing. So it won't let me edit that. Okay, so all of these scales, you know, all of those are mixolydian scales. So when you learn this one, or the, the, the C shape that we did here, or the D one, all of those are movable. Um, and the ultimate goal, like the, uh, you know, the high, high goal would be to be able to play in G mixolydian here and C mixolydian and D mixolydian uh, in this position here. And then the same thing here. Not that you don't want to move up and down the neck, um, but I do feel like there's... Th one of the first things I do, this is kind of unrelated, but one of the first things I do when I get a, when I get a piece of music, okay? So say somebody sends me a piece of music like this, okay? The first thing I do is I look, what's the highest note, what's the lowest note? So the highest note on this is this D up here. And the lowest note is this, looks like this D down here. Now, in reality, I think I broke this into two parts. So I played like the top line and the bottom line or something. I can't remember. I don't remember this. Let's see how's it go. Um, oh no, I played it. Like, yeah, it's very it makes it makes sense. Um, so the reason I do that is I find the highest note and lowest note, and I and I basically then if it's in one position, I can play every note on that page in this position. Um, there's a huge advantage to that when you're sight reading music because first thing that happens when you're reading music and if you have to look to, to make a position shift, you look down and then you look up and you've lost your place. Um, and that's not a good that's not a good place. Now, ultimately, I probably won't play everything in one position because I may go, well, you know, I really like the sound of the D down here. I don't like the sound of this D. Or, uh, you know, I may prefer this D here, not this D, or this B and not this B or whatever. So I may move around to get the tone I want. Um, and if this was pretty simple because you got a lot, no, the, actually the challenge of this chart was that you got a lot of hold, you know, held notes there. You got to keep track. You got to count bars. Um, and you know, one of the tricks there is in logic, I can make a giant bar counter like this big is I can make it the size of the screen. If I want, I could drag it off on another screen. It would be like, you can see one, two, three, four, bar two, three, four, you know, so on and so forth. And, um, I'll do that so that I, at a glance, I can look up. And usually, if I'm if I'm recording electric, I'm facing the screen and I put the chart down here. If I'm recording acoustic, I turn away from uh, the computers and everything, uh, the mic, the you know the things that make noise, and kind of face this way. But um, anyway, that's inside baseball stuff. That you don't really need to know. But it's cool to be able to just like without having to move your hand, just have access to all those scales. And we've been doing it with the snippets, and I, you, you love to hear me say snippet. I know it's your favorite thing. Oh, John, uh, ask me a question about the music business. <laughs> I don't know. How much does the song score writer make compared to the musician? Oh, uh, usually, I mean, it depends. I work with some songwriters that don't ultimately never make any money at all, but they want me to play on it, so they have to pay me. So I can make you know, $500 to play on a song and then they make nothing because they didn't sell the song. Uh, but if I'm working for a composer, you know, a composer can make 200000 for a score and um, I may, you know, they, you know, my total pay may be $2,000 for all the work I do on it or whatever. So, uh, and then if, definitely if, you know, if I'm working with Bieber, I'd rather be the songwriter on a song that's released than a guitar player on a song. Don't really care. But the kid that he actually wrote the guitar hook, so he got both those things. Uh, well, I don't think you generally, if you're a writer, they don't usually let you uh, get paid as a guitar player. They just say, you're a writer, take, you know, be happy with that money. And it's usually good money. 
And if you have a big hit, usually, I, I haven't done that because I, I like to own everything, but you can sign a publishing deal. So a lot of young people, they come to LA, they don't have any money, but they do have talent and they get a placement and they'll get a, a, you know an advance from a publisher anywhere from, you know, it could be 20,000 to 50,000 to 200,000, uh, depending on how much, uh, how big a hit they think it's going to be. And they can kind of know this stuff. Um, and then that way, what they can do is use that money to live on while they write more music and make the publisher more money. So, and they make more money too. But to answer your question, John, it's basically the answer is it depends. I mean, I've worked on, I, I, I've, I've worked on scores where I know that the composer spent every dime he had for budget. Um, he spent it on musicians and didn't save anything for himself because he really wanted to be uh, the best music possible and was hoping for back end. So if, if the music is playing on, you know, if it's a Christmas movie on Lifetime and it airs 50 times every every December, uh, then, you know, you can you can make some money. So, yeah. Um, um, so let me see. Uh, you know, there's another snippet that we can look at um, where we're just taking part of the, we can take the, you know, we did these uh, six notes. So we can just take the top two of each string. And I love that lick for the G7. Because you could, you're basically doing the seventh, the root, G, the third, the, the fourth, which is always a fun note to hit, right? It's like, that's a sus four kind of sound. Back to the third, back to the root, to the seventh. You can stay there if you want to kind of leave people hanging, or you can resolve it to the, resolve it to the, um, uh, resolve it to the G, the root. Okay, play that with me. Fourth string, third fret. Third finger on the fifth fret. Second finger on the fourth fret. Third finger on the fifth fret. Back to the third fret. And then the fourth. I hear Eric Johnson do this one a lot, you know. You can even go down to... That. That's another cool little snippet, and, and if you like that, you try to try to find it. <coughs> you try to find it in the other. Uh, that's actually a great idea. So why don't I show you a lick, and then we'll put it in the other three, or the other two, uh, the other two mixolydian scales. It's a great way to kind of get familiar with the scale and to find the little things you can kind of go to uh, when your brain stops working for a second, okay? Yeah, isn't that a great? Um, so let me let me plug in the G chord here, let's see. Uh, just need a little. So this is just the G chord. Ah, trying to get my windows organized. The other, the, if you want to get start a little lower, you can start on the C note, go to the D, then to the F and the G. Cool, huh? If you want to resolve it down, you can resolve it down too, all the way to the B there. But you'll notice that I'm not using. 
I'm not playing in second position. I'm actually bringing my hand up to the third position because I want to play it with the, you know, I'd rather play the lick with these three fingers than, I mean, I could be like a purist, but that just doesn't, you want, you want to be able to dig in and kind of feel confident in there. And I didn't turn on my light. Hold on. Why is my face so dark? There we go. I didn't get a tan. Yeah, no, you don't need to be. Oh, uh, yeah, it's. No, I, I, I might, if I'm going to shred that skill, I'll play it positionally. But if I'm going to play inside the scale and start to play melodies instead of just playing the scale, the scale just sounds like an exercise. You want to play some. Okay, so again, that lick, we're using the G mixolydian shape, which is the first shape there in the upper right hand corner over, over, over there. <laughs> I never know where to point. The window's over here. I gotta remember, just point at the window. Okay, so I'm starting on the seventh, which is the F. Okay, and you can look at the top scale there. Uh, you can see all these notes I'm gonna play are gonna be in this scale. F, G, B, I skip the A, C, B, G, F, and if you want to continue down, D, C. That's too loud. It's going to break up the... Okay. So, where are those notes in the C? Let's go figure that out. Um, okay, I'm going to grab the next bar, which is the C chord. Okay, so there's our four chord. Yeah, I see the question for maybe Bruce. I'll get to it in a second. Okay, so again, that lick was starting with. See, it doesn't work over the C. Uh, and for the C chord, it's going to be a little tricky. Because the C is here and the E is here. So it's a flat, the seventh, the B flat, to C, to E. Uh, Finish it off, you can. but let's just work on this a little bit. So, uh, third fret on the third string, and I'm going to grab the fifth fret with my second finger. And just move my hand up. Don't don't feel like you have to keep your second, first finger down. Just go, okay. And then get this E note on the same fret, the fifth fret, with your third finger. And then go ahead and bend it up a half step, and then down. You can totally hammer on, or you can pluck each note. That has a different effect, okay? Uh, okay, I'm gonna go up here. Um, hammering on is more legato, what that would be called legato playing. You know, if I were going. That's called legato playing, and you're basically pulling off whenever you can. Jimmy Page would do that a lot, right? You would pull off all those, pull, you know, those pentatonic skills. Um, if you if you do legato, it's going to be a little, it's going to sound a little smoother, right? Oops, wait a and your right hand doesn't have to work as hard. If you pluck every note, it's going to sound a little more frenetic, a little bit more energetic, a little bit more, maybe a little more tense. So you can work on that both ways. No, neither way is correct. It's more of a stylistic thing. There are some guitar players, and then you also play it, pluck every note, and mute them. So you can't do legato and mute because you're going to be dead in the strings. You need the string to vibrate. So that's a totally different vibe too. Did you hear that? Okay, so um, I did it up here because it's easier to play that that C lick there than here. So if I that C lick, I might tend to play like that, and I can I can do the the F with the pinky, or I could bend the E up to the F, and it could either be flat. There's the G, there's the F, and there's that E, which is the third of the C chord.
See, if I know I'm going to do that lick, then I'll just automatically... And see, this first, watch my first finger when I do that. See, I'm not trying to keep my first finger down there. There would be the legato, there. Pull off. Pull off. Pull off. Okay. I love that too, going from the third to the fourth to the fifth to the sixth. And that sounds really good legato, I have to admit. Go to the C instead of the B too. You know, there's certain certain snippets, certain parts of the scale that just feel better in your hand. Like this, that lick is a little weird played here. It's really fun here in G. Okay. All right. Let's find that same lick now over the D chord, and then I'll answer. I'll try to answer your question, Ab. Uh, let's see. Where is it? All right, so if you remember, the notes in the, in the lick are the root, the third, the fourth, the third, the fourth, uh, root, the seventh. All right, sorry, I gotta get my windows organized. Here we go, all right. So we start on the, uh, so. I think I've ever played it that way. This way is very, very much like the G. It's, a, it's the same as the G, but down a string. So let's start with a low version of this, and then I'll show you the octave up version of the, the, D, the original lick, and now we're over the D. And again, I'm staying in this position. So I'm able to do that phrase, uh, that lick, that idea over each one of these, over each one of the three chords, staying in this position. Okay, so I'm going to, here's the flat seven, which is a C. Uh, you want, you don't, I mean, that's, uh, John, it's up to you how much you want to hang on that note, but yeah, the flat seven's a great note to hit. It creates a lot of tension, it's not the root. I mean, the root's obviously a good note to hit, but you don't want to land on the root every time or people are going to get bored. Your ideas are going to sound, I don't know what the, what, what, what they're just going to sound predictable almost. So here's the seventh, here's your D, we're over D chord. You can even see it when you play this shape. There's our third, the F sharp, and there's the G, the fourth. So I'm on the fifth string, third fret, fifth fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, fourth fret. See that? And on the seventh. And on the root. I can end on the third. I can end on flat third. Okay, if I want to keep that, if I want to go down to the F sharp down there. So if I want to make it a bigger lick, I could start here on the G. G hit the G, the A, the C, the D, the F sharp. If I pluck everything, it's going to sound a lot more. Fusion-y, a little bit more uh, shredder-like. Time. 
Okay, now we're gonna do the same thing. Um, but yeah, this, the flat third creates some tension. Now let's instead of um, uh, fingering that G note, the fourth. Okay, so this is the F sharp is the third of the D seven chord. This is the fourth. Let's use our second finger and pull down towards the floor and bend it. Just try to go a half step. Like that. So it'd be like this. Again, but this let's add those three notes there it's kind of low you know I always tell you it's better to solo up high because you get out of the way of the piano the other guitar player the bass player the drummer you know you get away from the singer you get up here and it's like you know it, it's it's a little bit it's gonna be more heard I think on a record or even live if you're playing up higher but that's okay like I said this applies we can dock it up an octave really okay So we're basically using the D mixolydian scale to create a lick. And we did it on the G and we did it on C. Now here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that lick in all four keys. Okay, I'm gonna I'm going to uh, just jam here and I'll show you. I'll just do that lick. Okay, so you can see, I mean, heck, you could almost make a solo out of that. In some ways, um, that's one of the things when I did, the, the one short, short spell that I actually played with a blues band, I always thought blues was easy because I was a jazz snob, right? And so I thought, oh, blues is easy. Oh, anybody can play the blues. Because, you know, you see 12-year-old kids play the blues and you're like, ah, you know, anyone can do it. And then you get in a blues band and you realize about the third song in, you've used all of your blues, you know, the, all the blues licks that you have. And I, I know like people like Carl Verheyen, who's a very, who was my teacher in the 80s, he's a very good blues guitar player, but he totally studied, like he would tell me like, this is, this is a a B.B. King lick. And this is a Buddy Guy lick, and this is a, an Albert King lick. This is what Albert King would do, and this is what Robert Johnson would do, and this is what Steve Ray Vaughan would do. I mean, he just had this lexicon of phraseologies from all these different blues guitar players. So, what's going on? We got a lot. Hey, Barbie, what's going on? Sweet Egg, uh, Chris Long. Yeah, uh, uh, somebody asked, oh, Chris, who smoke on the water? <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I don't generally do. I, I don't because I don't want to get a copyright uh, issue, um, and uh, if if I get a copyright, um, and John, you asked me a question. I'm gonna. Uh, oh wait, was it John? I think John, you asked me a question quite a while ago now. Oh no, AB, AB, you asked me a question. AB asked a question. As a songwriter, do you promote using simple four chords for songs given the recent copyright lawsuits filed against? Um, Famous pop songs. Should we get creative with both melody and chords? What's your what's your take? Always get creative, um, but you can't change the fact that pop is going to be generally pretty simple, and it's going to pop is generally a tad formulaic in its era. Um, the formula that existed for the Beatles is completely different than the formula that existed today. Heck, the formula that existed ten years ago is different. 
Um, I, I even like to say that there's certain chord progressions. You know, the... the uh, um, that one, six, four, five progression uh, was used a lot in the 50s. Um, and into the 60s, and then, you know, eventually, like in the, I think in the 90s. That was a very common chord progression, the 6, 4, 1, 5 progression. Um, and so I do think that there's a, a, a progressions tend to kind of uh, come and go in, in favor, you know. The, and But, you know, in the 70s, there was Every Breath You Take, which was a one six, four, five progression, like a 50s thing. But one thing that, that Sting did with that progression was instead of going like a bar of each, he did two bars of, of the one chord, two bars of the, two bars of the um, six chord, and then one bar of the four, one bar of the bar of the five, and back to two bars of the one. So it ended up being an eight bar phrase. Um, and so it didn't sound 50s. The way they did it, it sounded like an 80s song. Actually, that was the 80s, not the 70s. Um, Tom Petty, oh, one, six, let's see. I'm trying to think of a Tom Petty song that uses that. Um, but you can even go one, four, one, four. I mean, that's. But we're, and, and I disagree with the lawsuit. Um, the problem, there's there, there's a problem. I, I would say as far as chord progressions and being sued, you, chord progressions are not copyrightable. So you cannot copyright. Now, to, to which you say, well, what about Ed Sheeran getting sued for, it wasn't Photograph, what song was it? I forget what it was. Um, but, uh, mm -hmm. Um, let me go to a clean sound for a second here because the game thing won't. Oops, no, gotta go to logic. Uh, basically. Okay, so um, where he, you know, for one thing, where he got a problem, where he had a problem was he, um, he, he got his inspiration for a song from Marvin Gaye. And if Marvin Gaye were alive, it would not be a problem. But the problem is his estate are a bunch of greedy vultures. And uh, they just, I guess, they, they don't know how to work for a living. So they just have their lawyers sue anyone that does anything that would be considered um, a loving tribute to. And I don't even think Ed intentionally copied... Uh, uh, is it... <laughs> So for one thing, Ed did G, G over B, to C, D. Okay, so it's a one, first inversion, one chord, then a, then a, then a, um, yeah, thinking out loud, thank you. Um, then a five chord, okay. So that's not even the same chord progression. Uh, uh, Ed, uh, Rick Beato did a video on this. It's not even the same chord progression. It's not the same key, not the same tempo. Um, I think the original was was A flat, so it's close. Um, the melody's not even close, so he I, it would be hard to write a melody that was different if you were really thinking of the um, of the of, uh, Marvin Gaye song. Uh, but maybe you know, maybe he did like totally got the inspiration from that. But I I, I would never ever take an inspiration from a Marvin Gaye song. Uh, they are just known for suing. So, and and so, the Marvin Gaye song actually goes to B minor. It goes to a minor three chord. So. Um, 
so that's you know that's a different chord progression. The the thing that the other thing that they quoted as or that they said was part of the the theft was the push. Well, so if Ed Sheeran had done. They might not have noticed it. And the drum beat was the same. The easiest drum beat, probably the first drum beat you'll learn as a kid. So it's not like you can copyright a drum beat. You can't copyright a chord progression. You can't copyright a rhythmic figure. Um, but when you put those three things together, it got their attention and it was a hit. If it had been on an unknown album, sold 100,000 units, Marvin Gaye State never would have heard about it, but um, can you play an interpretation of a well-known? Um, well, I could do um, yes, like I could do a, a bebop version of "Smoke on the Water," right? Uh, right now, here and now, um, I couldn't sell it, but if I did it on here, I doubt any of the robots that could check for it would snag it. Um, an example where I really got in trouble, one time I was playing um, ETA, which is the Bieber song that I wrote with Pooh Bear, and um, I played it in the room and it came through this and of course they said, oh, so they said, you got an issue here, you can't monetize this video unless you chop out this section. So what I did was I chopped out that section, or they chopped it out for me. They make it really easy in that regard. But then I've had copyright infringements. One time, remember guys, I was playing, I was showing you, oh, here's a really easy not an easy, but a fairly easy classical guitar piece. It was the it was the uh, Louis Milan's uh, Six Pavanas and a Fantasia, and it's a very common thing. You can make it last twenty minutes. It's perfect for learning for playing at weddings. And I was playing it. It's five hundred years old, so there's no copyrights on it. And I <laughs> I got a copyright infringement notice on that video. And I was playing it live. I wasn't playing it in you know through the through a, a recording. In fact. Whoever it was, it was some florist that had an ad or had some kind of, you know, they were showing their store and they must have had that piece playing through it. Well, they didn't. I'm sure they didn't pay anybody to use that piece. And yet somehow they managed to get the copyright on it. And I got a copyright strike for doing that. Well, I fought it and won because I said, look, the piece is 500 years old and I'm actually playing it in the video. So it took them a month, but it was it was stupid. Um, hey, Franco, good to see you. Uh, like playing someone's music, the person gets sued also. You don't need a permission to play any song. No, 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 you don't. Churches have what's called CCLI, which they pay into. And what that does is you just turn in your set list at the end of the you know quarter or the six month period or whatever. Uh, or do it online every week, and uh, and the the money that you give to CCLI get it's a nonprofit. It gets distributed to the songwriters, so that's pretty cool. Um, and I've made money from CCLI, um, and so um, that's uh, that's a different that's a different stream of income than than mechanicals and performance royalties. Good, that's church licensing. So. Um, so generally, churches do that, but if you're a little church, it doesn't really matter. They're not going to they're not going to give you grind, grind you for that. Um, as far as playing a, a on on Twitch, I'm not sure. I think that if you're, I I just was talking to a friend of mine who's got a drum channel on Twitch. Um, uh, he does drumming stuff, and uh, Brian Cops. Uh, you can look him up here. It's uh, Brian K O P S. He's a drummer. Uh, and you can follow him on Twitch or whatever. Tell him I sent you, if you if you're interested in that. But he he will play real tracks and you know like play on his MP3 and play songs and play along with it. Um, and he says, yeah, they'll they'll let him do that live, but they won't let him re rebroadcast it. Um, and Twitch now does pay royalties, although I haven't seen anything uh, because you know I work on I work on, um, uh, I work on um, uh, play all the guitars and basses on um, uh, Apex Legends, and uh, they're big on Twitch. And uh, the composer graciously gave me uh, writers, which is cool. I didn't have to do that. So, hey, Dennis. Yeah, so I was looking into that. Uh, it's 
the software for OBS, it's, uh, was it Steam something? I downloaded it. Uh, the thing is, for me to do uh, streaming on Twitch and on, um, on YouTube at the same time, um, I have to uh, pay 12 bucks a month, I think. So I, I'll, I'll decide that later. I wish I could try it out first and see if it generated any... Um, uh, okay, you're having ice cream. Well, that's the same thing. You can do that. Um, uh, if, uh, if I were to do that, um, it would be... Um, uh, uh, it'd be cool if I could do it, but uh, I don't know if, if it's... If, I'm, I'll have to figure it out. I'll decide if I'm going to spend 12 bucks. It's not that much. I mean, I just, I just, uh, you know, I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> I'm part Scottish. Um, let's see. <laughs> I know we have Scots out there. Um, let's see. So, yeah, exactly. So many silly lawsuits. It is, it is ridiculous. Um, I had the pleasure, I told you about the time I served on that jury, and I got to see a, a, a ambulance chaser lose, lose a case. That was a great joy. Um, but so, um, so that's the lick uh, that we kinda, I kind of found in, inside Mixolydian uh, scale over blues chord, you know, progression. <laughs> That I really like. Another one we can do that I like is um, you can play that five, six, seven, six thing. So I'm on the second string, thir se uh, third fret. I hit that note, then the, then the uh, fifth fret, which is the sixth. And then the pinky on the sixth fret, which is the seventh, and then back down to the fifth fret, which is the sixth. So I'm playing D, E, F, E, D. I am wearing pants, yes. I suppose if I do the video and I'm like this, you'll know I'm not wearing pants, but. <laughs> so. Um, so that's. That sounds pretty cool. Let me play it over the G so you can hear it. Uh, I think the G chord's right here. Oh, I gotta go back to my blues sound. Uh, right here. It's annoying. It's just the same chord over and over again. But it's just so you to show you the sleep. to end on a flat three. All right, so that's five, six. And it's, it fits great in for the G chord in this position. Um, it also is higher. It's not down here. I could play it down here. As, just so you know, it's the same thing as doing this. Like this. So, um, oh, you're helping Pepper with some schoolwork? All right. Now, if I go to the C chord, right here. Okay, we got all we got to do is find the, the G note. It's right, here's one right here. Well, we could, if we did it here, we could do it here. G, B, I'm sorry, yeah, G, G, A, B flat, A, G. Thanks, Dennis. I'll check that out. I'll have to pull that. I have to pull So I guess... Cool, I'll check that out. So Restream is the is the product. Okay. 
Yeah, I you I, I downloaded what was what I downloaded the uh, Okay, so that's the that's the lick in C and then the D chord. Where can we find that? Well we Oh funny. I'm gonna stop that. That's the that's the turnaround right there. Uh, let me go to this five chord here. So the fifth in D is the A. So we want to find the A. Hang it, sorry. I have trouble getting all my windows open. Here. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Uh, the A. So that would be here. And that's a very mixolydian lick. If we didn't do the middle note, it would be very pentatonic. That would be a snippet of the uh, the D minor pentatonic. We, we, we put that we put that sixth in there. Okay, so let me do that lick over all, the whole progression. starts on the fifth of the chord. The G chord, the fifth is D. The D chord, the fifth is A. musical okay so you know you can mix it around do different things with it but you, but you can take one lick and you can move it around to all three pentatonics and that's a great way of slowly kind of learning this because like I said that's a big chunk of information to bite off I don't want that to scare you that's why we started doing like one string sections or just two string sections uh, the middle two strings in particular we did those in the previous two videos we did a lot of that um, so you know my goal is I, I realize that most of my viewers are in the beginner to intermediate phase and I don't want to discourage anyone so I want but I want to show you some cool stuff that like the pros you use without even thinking um, eventually, you know, you don't start out like, oh, I could just play pentatonic. No, you, you got to learn all that stuff. So, um, uh, not sure if you use a dropped and tune your strings a half step up, you can still use the same finger positions over and over for each root note. Uh, well, as long as you know where the root note is, you know, if you can find, if you're, um, we all screen for multi-screen ice cream. Um, um, if you tune up a half step, that's kind of weird. Um, if I capoed it, would nothing changes, obviously, but then I lose, you know. One thing, problem with capoing on electric. See, it, you know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not opposed to it, okay? But one of the problems with capoing on electric is it makes it harder to bend strings. Yeah, have you ever capoed like at the fifth fret, tried to bend, and all of a sudden the string just stays there because the capo is holding it down? And you're like, oh, dang it. <laughs> Come back down. You have to pull it down. Uh, so that's one of the disadvantages of capoing. If I'm, if I'm capoing with on electric, we haven't talked about that. That's a classic capo. Here's, here's a capo thing. Um, it's oftentimes because I want to use, you know, I want to play some open chords or have something like really ringy, like. You know, something like that. Kind of like a Tom Petty kind of vibe, speaking of Tom Petty. Hey, Nada, what's going on? Um, 
So, uh, yeah, so I, I'm not opposed to k point, but, but that's one of the th problems with k point. you can't bet. But if you're tuned up a half step, yeah, then you're going to have to play down a fret to be in the same key. But if, that, if, you're, if you're just jamming with your jam track, then you just play where it works. Um, so I'm, uh, uh, let's see. A lot of people, you know, drop D, and that would change your low notes, um, but it really wouldn't change... Um, it wouldn't change... Um, it would just change the bottom string. It wouldn't change anything else. And like I said... Um, Uh, doing the D E A chord sound, yeah, no, that's right. Again, I mean that's one of the reasons I capo on electric is to have that open string sound but high. Um, and sometimes I'll capo, like if I want to do something where I've got like, I'll say I want an A string on the on the, if I want an A, the A this to be an A. You know, something like that. I couldn't play that without a capo. Um, I, I could play it in open position, but it wouldn't be in the key I needed. So if the song is... You know, if it was... That's kind of boring. I want to create a more interesting guitar part of mine. And it kind of gets back to A-B's thing, you know, you can take a chord progression, um, and the, the, the goal is not to, you know, nobody's writing pop songs, they're, you know, they're writing pop songs on the same chord progression, but they're doing them in different ways. The, sonically, they're doing, you know, these weird synth sounds, or they may do it with vocals, or they may have just a bass and, not, and the harmonies implied, or they may have a guitar, they may have a piano, they may have an electric guitar, they may finger it a certain way, or... <laughs> My goal is <clears throat> any time, like when I wrote Home to Mama, you know, it was I, it, a very basic chord progression. It was one, six, five, four. But what I was doing was I was playing with the second of each one of those chords so that it was. Okay, that's, you know, I was creating a melody on the G string, basically. And that was what I came up with. I went like this, and I went, okay, cool. And then I did. What if I did the same thing? Go down three whole steps. I end up on that second. And that G to A creates a weird thing, and it wasn't anything anyone had heard before. And AB, there was a song that came out, the kid did that on guitar and wrote a new song over it. And he released it on Spotify and somebody sent it to me and said, Hey man, somebody stole your lick. And I, you know, it like, he literally has a thousand views on Spotify, not worth my time to sue him over this. Um, and so uh, he replayed it, but it was exact same, he played it exactly the same. Uh, it's not, not like it was difficult. So, um, I don't know, not, not, I, that, that, that handle looks familiar, Bruce. I'm not sure. Um, Let's see what else. Uh, so we, we got oh, 27. We were up there. Let's see, what was our peak? 39. Holy cow. So I guess whenever I talk about Bieber, it goes down. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm curious. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, so I did change the, got rid of the ads on that. Um, let me go back to the. All right. Yeah, I had a couple. Uh, had a couple nice days there with revenue. It was nice. Uh, Holly, I think you gave me some coin the other day. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was. Um, it was weird because it my spins got up for a second. Not exactly sure what's causing it. Uh, you're from Bolivia. Awesome. Uh, I, I have a charango. I don't, I'm not going to say I'm a charango player. Uh, my charango actually, I think, was purchased in Peru. Uh, but I, isn't it charango, I think, maybe a Bolivian instrument? It's an amazing instrument. I play it a little bit on movies and stuff like that, but I'm usually picking it or doing some kind of 
uh, Gustavo uh, Santalaya, Santalaya uh, who's a great composer. And he's from Argentina, I think. But, so what we've been talking about, um, for all the newbies here, <clears throat> this this uh, series, and I've got, uh, this is lesson <laughs> one thirty. Let me put up a link to the, uh, uh, let's see. Let me create a link for the uh, the uh, Discord. Okay, so if you're new, um, you can click on this link and join Discord. Keep be nice to everybody. It's not a it's not a place to troll. Hey, Peroni, um, it's not a place to troll. But um, up there are all these diagrams that I create, like the ones you see right here. Okay, and then. Um, also, anytime I write paperwork, like I did this with Cruz uh, yesterday, anytime I do something like this, that's up there. I've got so far since COVID started, we've done 133 lessons. I think the first 62 were daily. I literally did 62 days in a row. Um, and so if you go to that, um, I posted and I could repost it. Um, and under Tom's text chat, was that where it was? Yeah, I posted, oh, Avito, oh, reposted it. That's awesome. Thanks, Avito. Um, but it has the, the first 120 some odd lessons. And you can see I did I did 12 lessons on the cage method. I talk about the modes. I talk about chord theory, circle of fifths, uh, finger picking, blues basics, strumming and grooving, the dad gad tuning, chord progressions, open scales, capoing, uh, power chords. Uh, my biggest influences, uh, capo, more capo stuff, electric guitar, weird stuff, pentatonic scales, blues scales, intro to slide, uh, slide basics and soloing. And now we're, oh, and then we were talking about diatonic scales. And now we're talking about, now that we've learned diatonic scales up and down the neck, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm showing you how you can take, because in a blues progression, you have three chords and they're technically, if they're all seventh chords, they're in three different keys. So you can't necessarily, like, if I'm playing in G blues, I can I can pretty much play a G minor pentatonic for the first two chords. Oops. But you know, it's a there there are things you can do to the pentatonic to make it fit different chords, and we can talk about that too at another time. But. Um, Actually, that would be a great lesson. I can I should do that. Um, but this, and I did. We did talk about that. Actually, now I think about it. We did snippets for the C chord, G chord, G chord, C chord, and the D chord. Uh, very, very. Uh, this is very BB King. That's very uh, Steve Ray Vaughan. Uh, and this is very much everybody else. Um, so, um, so what I did was I showed you a G mixolydian scale. In the, basically in the second position means second fret and in a C mixolydian scale in the second fret and a D mixolydian scale so that we can play the, over the G chord, the C chord, and the D chord because that's the diatonic scale that fits over a seventh chord is the mixolydian, okay? The only difference between a mixolydian scale in review and a major scale is that the seventh note is flatted. So when I play the first six notes of a mixolydian scale, you don't know it's a mixolydian scale. See if I... You don't know. If I play F sharp, then it's G major. If I play F natural, it's G mixolydian. So listen, here's major. And here's minor, I mean, uh, uh, mixolydian. And see, it's that F that accommodates the F that's in the G7 chord, okay? And it just, again, <laughs> You can. I'll take a sip. There's no. There's. There'll be no quiz on this. Okay. Uh, in any major key, there's only one seventh chord, dominant seventh chord. There's every chord can be said. I could go G major, A minor seven, or G major seven, A minor seven, B minor seven. But the only time that a dominant seventh chord or a seventh chord, to be simplified, a seventh chord is found in a major key is on the fifth degree. So the G, when I play G7, you could say I'm playing a G dominant seventh chord, which is totally true, and it's a dominant of the C. So technically G7 wants to go. 
let me go back to my clean sound. Okay, hold on a second. Or maybe I'll pull up my Pat Metheny sound. Okay, so my window's back in order here. All right, so if I go there, I'm in, I'm in the key of C. I go G7 to C major 7. Okay, I'll write that up for you so you can see those two chords. Oh, wow, we suddenly exploded at 47. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome. And what's going on? Okay, uh, so the G7, all right, which is the five chord in the key of C, I played like this. Sorry. And then the C major 7 that I played the second chord you heard, the pretty one, right? Very sexy. Yeah, I see. It says 38. It was 47 for one second, and then it jumped down to 38. Weird. Um, uh, was this one? I'm starting on the fifth string. Three, five, four, five, three. Okay. Boom. All right. So those are the two chords. Hey, Josh. Um, okay. So that's our C major. So that's that's like how G should resolve. G7 should resolve like that. And, and another way to play G, uh, um, you basically just remember we remember our tritone, or our guide tones, the F and the B. If that if I resolve that, basically I take that F down to E, which is the third of C, and I take that B up to C, and listen to this resolution. That's great resolution right there. That's day one of music theory class. Five. It's a five-one resolution. We got a seventh chord. If I didn't have the seventh, I might do that, or I might, or I might go. Uh, there'll be no root on it. anyway. I don't get too convoluted here. However, the second chord in blues is not a C major seven. It's a freaking C seven. So that's not a resolution. It's more tension, <laughs> which is great because again, music is all about tension and res resolution. You create tension, you create resolution, and the blues blues is like it's all about tension. Okay, so let me play that. Uh, so I'm playing that G mixolydian scale. Now I'm going to go to the C, and it can sound much more jazzy. Back to the G mixolydian. Here's our little lick. D mixolydian. Back to C mixolydian. And my goal is to be as fluid between those as possible. That's the beauty of having them all in one position. talked about this before but I, I feel like there's a lot of new people right now one of the things I really like trying to do is pointing out and that's why we did the snippets if you go back to lessons and I got rid of the billions of ads on the previous lessons so sorry and if you're watching this now and you're you just saw an ad for the thousandth time I'm sorry I'm deleting the ads as soon as they finish processing but in the meantime I can't do that I can't delete the ads I, I, I put an ad every 30 minutes but that's it okay um, what I'm trying to do is kind of highlight the differences between the scales and if you look at the G um, up here, if you look at the G mixolydian scale, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, uh, there's only one note difference between the G and the C mixolydian, and that's the, in, the Bs are flatted, okay? And the difference between G and D mixolydian, the only difference is there's an F sharp. So basically those are, the, those, are those little moments that you want to kind of try to highlight to make it, I don't know, I like, to make, I like to say make it sound like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Because because that puts your audience at ease, even if you're creating tension. Oh, the audience, you know, you're, over the, you know, you, you, uh, 
Yes, John. I'll talk. Uh, Josh, I'll talk about that. Uh, you're a teacher, so the, the, I'm sure you've had to talk about that a lot too. Um, and um, the uh, the the difference between the the there's the B and there's the B flat. So when I'm playing over the G, and I make that change right on the C chord, it's like, oh, okay. I really highlighted where the that that moment where it, it's different, okay? Hey, Peter Toth, welcome back. Had long come to see. Um, so uh, the same thing with the F sharp. So we're playing over the G chord. And then we, it changes to the D chord, and I make that, I go from that F to that F sharp. I'm showing that I understand that the difference between G mixolydian and D mixolydian is the F and the F sharp. Um, and that really... Uh, the, the difference between D mixolydian and C mixolydian is going to be two notes. So it's going to be a little more radical. Uh, but one of the things I love about the snippet, and then you go to the snippet for the C, it's just right, there's the snippet, and by uh, the snippet I'm calling the middle two strings. So if the G mixolydian snippet is the middle two strings of that scale, the fourth string, the fourth string and the third string, same thing with the C, the fourth string and the third string. And then on the D mixolydian, it was so fingering wise, it's one, two, four, one, three, four, and then one, two, four, one, two, four, and then one, three, four, one, three, four. So anyway, the change all occurs here in the middle of in the middle of the middle. Okay, so uh, great question uh, from oh dang, it went up fast. Dang, Josh, where did you? <laughs> You guys have been chatty. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it says 30. Yeah, I see 38 watching now. Okay. Josh, whatever is that? Wait. Oh, no. Okay. I wrote that there. Josh said. Oh, can you talk? Oh, it wasn't that far. Okay. Can you talk about uh, building a solo over multiple courses? Yes. I can tell you particularly that I failed I realized what a bad blues guitar player I was when um, when I played in a blues band. I had a friend that started in a blues band and he invited me to join. There was another guitar player who was really good and so it was fun to get to play with him. We, I wouldn't say we'd been rivals, but we'd played in a lot of like bands to uh, opposite each other in a lot of places in Pasadena. Uh, he actually, I think he was friends with Eddie Van Halen. Uh, um, uh, John, uh, uh, Marino, uh, Marini, Daryl Marini, really good guitar player. I wonder what he's, I gotta look him up. You can see what he's up to. Uh, he had a store in Alhambra called Marini's, um, a guitar store. You know, it's like that business. Well, it's, it's a tough business. Um, and so it was him, me, a bass player, and a drummer. And I thought, oh, blues is easy. You know, 12 year olds do it, right? Um, and uh, I thought, well, you know, I, I, I can do this. I get in rehearsal and I realize in rehearsals, as we're learning these songs, a lot of songs, that I have the vocabulary of a two-year-old. <laughs> so, like, Josh, you make a great point. If I only had to do a chorus of blues twice a set, say we did 10 songs in a set and I only had to do two solos for 12 bars, I would have been golden. But that's generally not how blues works. You, you do the head, you sing the song. It's kind of like a, a bebop gig. You, and I'd come from doing that. But that's a whole different thing. And um, so I get into the jazz context, or I mean the blues context, and I'm like, I, I use all of my licks in the first song because I got to do like three choruses. Or I'm alternating with Daryl. Like he's doing three choruses and I do three choruses. And then the next song, I do three choruses and he does it. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I, I realized it was really so, um, and very, very rarely do I get asked to do a long solo. In the studio, in pop, it's very rare. If I get pop, it's going to be four bars, eight bars. I just did a solo. Actually, it was pretty long. I just did a solo on a record. Uh, it was kind of like a, kind of like a Billy Joel meets Toto. Uh, and, and my son Alex was producing it, and he asked me to play a solo on it. And so I did kind of my Lukather impersonation. Um, and, um, 
I, uh, I did a solo, and I, it took a while, but we did a bunch of passes, and then Alex kind of pieced together a solo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so kind of cheating there, Josh. So, uh, live, you can't do that. <laughs> so, um, but what one of the things that I've learned, um, I guess, I, I guess you could say, be like Beethoven. Um, in the sense that what you want to do, the one of the best ways if you got to play over three or four courses of blues, start simple. You could start, you know, one of the things you could start low. I can, I can model this. Um, I could do it better now than I could back in the day. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. And, so, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start low. I'm gonna start low and slow, and eventually go high and fast. Okay, so I'm not gonna be sticking to these scales here. I'm gonna start there maybe, but I'm gonna kind of get away. But 54, 56, that's crazy. I'm going to get away from. Uh, I'm going to get away from that. Okay. Well, I got to change my tone. Dang it. Let me go back to my blues tone for this guitar. All right. Now, um, and then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to create a theme. Now, the theme may be a lick, like like. Um, that I just transpose. But you don't have to do that. You can keep it even simpler than that. You can just play one note, and that D works great over the G chord. And then the D doesn't work so good over the C, so, so I'm gonna move that up to maybe an E. And then I'll go back to the back to the D, or maybe go up to the F, or whatever. Um, I might, and I'll slowly work up my way up the neck, um, and then I'll play high, so higher brings you more Intensity, more finality, that you peak, you want to peak, you know, you basically want your, I think for your perspective, you want it to go like this, right? You kind of want to, but it can go like this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and then this, and it kind of eventually end up, up there, you know, and I, I'm not making no promises here. This is a big, giant experiment, but let's, let's give this a shot. Okay, so I'm going to go back here, and we're going to... patient. Play off the 
the drummer. Do some triplets. four, five, six. That was six. That was longer than I would have ever played a solo live, I think. Okay. <laughs> and anybody tuning in was like, oh, well, he's just showing off. <laughs> so it, it, I, I tried to develop it. I, you saw I, I moved up the neck. I got a little bit faster at the end. I was kind of doing, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you need to, you need to be patient. I didn't do actually, uh, one of the things I didn't model very well was space. Remember, I tell you, space creates tens tension, too. Okay, let me go back and show you. <laughs> let me show you this. Sp Remember, it's all about tension. Like, I love this, the seconds. It's like a car horn, right? Or the tritones. Tritones sound great. Um, seconds sound cool. But space creates tension, too, because you're like, people are like, wait, what? Why is he not playing? <laughs> you know? And you're just manipulating it. Music is manipulation. 100% and t tension is a way to manipulate and resolution manipulates as well. Tension creates a sitting on your edge of the seat like what's going to happen next and resolution makes people relax. And you could have a, a lot more resolution and a lot more tension and people will be chill. It's like smooth jazz is all about mostly resolution and keeping it, you know, don't, don't offend anyone. And then you got bebop, you know, <laughs> and, and maybe death metal where you're like trying to create as much, you know, like... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to put a little space in here so you can get a sense of, of how that creates tension. Okay. Guitar, take it. I mean, it, it, you can really compare soloing to so many things. Um, and, I mean, that's a pretty obtuse conversation. <laughs> so, how's it going? And, <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, it's like, how's it going? And, <laughs> that's basically what you're doing. So, you know, but like you could have a minimalist painting or, you know, you listen to modern symphony, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, creating 
uh, and even not even modern symphony. Like I said, be like Beethoven, create a theme and variations, you know, have a theme. And the other thing is try to remember your theme because you can go back to it. Like if my theme was, then on the last course I could be up here. Playing the same thing up an octave higher and faster with more intensity. Um, and you're, you're basically book ending your solo. So that's not a bad thing to do also. Uh, was that John? I forget now. It's been so long since I started to answer the question. Um, <laughs> yeah. In 1966, I could barely play uh, tambourine. Um, let's see. Brazil in the house. All right. So. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. So that was, I think that was, oh, is Alex here? I didn't see Alex. Uh, oh, oh no, you're talking about the, the, the session I did. Yeah, that was funny. No, he, he liked everything. Oh yeah, Josh, no, it's Josh. Sorry, Josh, uh, 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 Beeler. Um, I don't know if you're still around, but hopefully that kind of answered the question a little bit. What was the question? Uh, that's a sippable offense, right? So, um, yeah, and I will look at um, multi-streaming. The only thing is, the crazy thing is I might have two, I'll have, uh, um, Dennis, I'll have two um, uh, chats going on at the same time, will I not? And so will that, will they integrate or will they be two different chat things? And I'll have to make my, I may have to get another screen in here. I really, I work with one screen. I've got a big giant iMac and it does everything. Story time. <sighs> Story time. Okay, I don't know. Well, <laughs> uh, I don't know if you're going to know who th this guy, Joel Hodgson is, but Joel Hodgson was a comedian. Oh, he's technically still, I think, I don't know if he still does comedy or not. Um, and, uh, uh, he, um, he's got, he had a great delivery. Um, uh, he was very kind of, well, I, I say great delivery. He had a very shy delivery, you know, again, keep in mind, this is like the 80, early eighties, uh, comedians, you know, that you kind of almost had to have, not only did you have to have a shtick, you also had to have a personality. Uh, it could be Rodney Dangerfield, oh, you know, with his tie and, you know, he never did get that tie tight enough. Um, and, uh, so Joel Hodgson um, and you can look them up. I think it's spelled here, yeah, right? Uh, Joel, Joel spelled Joel, but Hodge, Hodgson, maybe S E N. Yeah. Hod you can look them up. I think on, if you start to spell Joel Hodge on YouTube and I, I, I went to see him at the ice house in Pasadena, which is still there. Um, it's a comedy shop. I, Saw a lot of comedians there, um, and because um, because Kirk, who was a bass player in my band, his what his uh, I think it was fiance at the time, um, her best friend was dating Joel, and Joel was mo moved out to California and was from Minneapolis or Minnesota somewhere, and uh, was trying to make it as a comedian. So we went to the Ice House to see him, and he was great, and he was a very much a prop comic. Uh, I mean, just simple little things like he'd take a yellow um, balloon and, you know, not blown up. He'd take it, stick it on something. He goes, have you ever seen uh, a canary on a rocket sled? People were like, no. And he takes the balloon and he lets it go. And that was the bit, right? He had this other one where um, he, he points to a box on stage. It's just a cardboard box. It looks like it looks like a, it looks like a refrigerator box and big one. And um, it had written on a time machine. And um, and so he, he goes, oh, that's my time machine. I'm going to, you know, his, his delivery was really deadpan. And be like, I'm going to go get my time machine. And um, uh, and uh, does everybody believe that's a time machine? And everybody's like, yeah, you know, and he gets, he goes, gets in the box and he stands up and he, you can see his upper body. And, and he says, uh, so this is my time machine. 
Um, and I'm going to go back in time now. And he squats down and disappears. He's in the box. He goes, you can hear him talking. He goes, okay, I'm going back in time now. Okay, now I'm coming back from being back in time. <laughs> and we're like, oh, oh, all right, whatever, dude. <laughs> and he stands up and he's like, looks the same. He goes, I'm back from being back in time. Do you believe that I was back in time? And everybody goes, yeah, you know, what the heck, right? What are you going to say? And then he comes out of the box and he's got, he's riding a giant foam stegosaurus. He's got fake legs on the side of it. And his legs are down inside. And he got his fake legs on the side of the stegosaurus. And he walks out on stage to prove, you know, that he was, that he was back in time and he brought back a stegosaurus. You know, was, you know he would go to great lengths. He was on... And he started getting really well known. And Letterman, I think, had him on every three weeks. Uh, SNL offered him a monthly spot. Uh, ABC offered him a TV show. They would build an entire sitcom around him. And it was really taking off. And um, and uh, like one, another example was he, <laughs> he comes out like... Uh, what's his name? Uh, David Letterman introduces him, and he comes out on stage, and he's in a wheel, electric wheelchair, and there's these cages, like round cages, mounted to the side, both sides of the wheels, and um, they're full of white mice. There's like 20 white mice in each one of them, you know. And he wheels out, and the mice are literally hanging on and falling, and hanging on and falling as the wheels turn, you know. And the implication of it is that there are treadmills and the mice are actually making a move. And he goes, just all of that work just to say, I call this a mycicle. <laughs> it's like, really? But, you know, he would do that. He would, he would invent things. And he, that was actually his passion was inventing toys. So he had a whole workshop and would, you know, was always creating things. And some of them were for shows and some of them for, were for other things. Um, and if you look him up, you'll probably see some things that, oh, I can. he also had a two-headed mannequin uh, called Danny O'Danny <laughs> that he would do bits with, you know. So, um, anyway, and what's funny is that, okay, uh, and the reason I thought of this story was because my friend Joel is, the different friend Joel is, uh, is texting me. And my friend Joel, um, his last name is not Hodgson, but, um, Joel, flash forward about five years, I'm married, um, and uh, Kirk, my friend Kirk, got married, and, you know, I don't know whatever happened to Kathy's friend and, and uh, you know, with Joel or anything like that, and I'm playing tennis with, with my friend Joel, and um, I think it may have been the first or second time we played tennis. We eventually started, we played tennis almost weekly for, you know, a good 10 years, and um, I... Uh, at one point we're playing and I'm, I'm kind of like calling a play by play, right? You know, Tom Sterling hits a line shot down the shot. And Joel, you know, and it, instead of saying his name, I said, Joel Hodgson. I said, and Joel Hodgson hits an overhead slam. And, and he, Joel says, what? I said, Oh, I'm sorry, Joel. And then I said his name. He goes, no, wait, you said Joel Hodgson. I said, yeah, why? He goes, that's my brother-in-law. <laughs> I said, wait, what? He goes, yeah, my sister married the comedian Joel Hodgson. Why did you say his name? I said, I, I don't know why I said his name. It just slipped out. It was one of those like freaky moments where two worlds collided that had no relation to each other at all. And I just like, I never, you know, I probably never to this day wouldn't know that. Well, no, because I've gone over to the Hodgson, they, uh, Jim and Joel, uh, you know, I've been to their house and stuff like that, family stuff. So I see, I see him every now and then, but. In fact, I just recently talked to him, uh, to Jim, uh, his brother, and they, they kind of went in. Oh, you know what Joel did? You know what Joel did uh, that you might know is Mystery Science, Mystery Science Theater 3000, where he's sitting there with a robot. That's Joel. That's Joel Hodgson. So if you know that, um, <laughs> thanks, Win. <laughs> Jesus Christ loves me. I know that. I believe that. Even me. <laughs> so... Um, Adam Savage. I don't know Adam. I, don't know. I probably know Adam Savage if I saw him, but I don't know if you know. Is it Mystery Theater five thousand or three thousand? Or that's Joel. Joel created that with his brother. Mystery Theater. Three thousand. 
I mean, they, I think they did a reboot, Mystery Science Theater 3000. I think they did a reboot of it, but the original one was was by Joel Hodgson. So, um, yeah, Joel and, uh, oh, it doesn't have Jim as a writer. Wait, maybe. Mm, rain. Oh, they originally produced it in, in Minnesota. And then, and then they moved it to L. Oh, well, it was all of it was produced in Minnesota. Well, that makes sense. Because I knew that he moved back to Minnesota. And um, uh, just, I don't, L.A. is just not for everybody. <laughs> so it's, it, you know, I get that. And so I think that he said no to all those opportunities. Because I think he really just wanted to create toys. I touched my face, so let's take a sip. Yeah, Mystery Scene, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty funny show where they just make stupid comments. The, the stuff that we do, that was the brilliance of it. It's stuff that everybody does. They just made a show out of that. Um, you know, where you just, you're talking through stupid movies and that's what he would do. Yeah. So, um, oh, let me give, let me post a link to the, to the, um, Discord so that you can join, join up. This link should, shouldn't expire, but I don't know if it will or won't. Um, hopefully not, but, um, it's just a place where, uh, all the diagrams, all, everything I create, like the, the diagrams here, any paperwork I create, like stuff like this, I scan and upload. So if you go to Tom's bookmarks, you'll see that. Uh, discussion continues before and after sometimes our, um, uh, my broadcast. And um, I'm not usually there, uh, but sometimes I'll log in to say, let you know that, oh, I'm not going to be able to be there on this day or whatever, uh, just to give you a heads up. Also, um, Bruce, uh, you see Bruce in here, Bruce Ring Rose in, is his name, his handle here. Um, he is uh, building me a CGB build, which is a cigar box, or CBG build, which is cigar box guitar, literally making a guitar, uh, building a guitar around a cigar box, which is a thing. And uh, it's actually a really big thing. And I don't have one, so he's making me one. He's very kind, and he's building me one. I don't know what it's going to cost. <laughs> Um, and I can't wait to get it and do the, oh, the, um, the unboxing, the live on, well, I may, I may go ahead and film that, the unboxing and post it. Um, thanks, Wynn. Appreciate it. Um, and, uh, uh, I may film it so I can, I, so people can, can, are more likely to find it. If I do it in a live stream, it's really hard to find this stuff. Um, however, if you go to, um, the, the chat in uh, the Discord site, you'll see a list that I uploaded, and I'll update it um, eventually, and it has kind of the, the the themes of all the lessons, you know, at least the first 40 or 40 of the first 60 minutes I talk about the lesson, and then we get sidetracked with questions, or I talk about story, or I'm just showing off on guitar. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's kind of what we, what we do here. Um, so let's see. Was there any other questions, Dennis? Oh, Dennis had a little stop sign there. What was that about, Dennis? Uh, they have specific chat apps. So, oh, you can follow both. Okay, cool. All right, thanks, Dennis. Um, I uh, yeah, I can see people are starting to it's starting to fall off because uh, it's getting towards the end of the the time. Usually, I go about an hour and a half to an two hours. Sometimes I go over two hours. Sometimes I go an hour just because I have other stuff to do. I do have other stuff to do today. Um, but it's not going to start until later, so I'm, I'm good. I just try not to wear myself out too much. And coffee wears off, and then I get really tired. I'm like, oh, I don't want to work today. But I have to work every day. So um, let's see. Anything else? Any other questions? This lesson was started. Uh, yes, the series was started on March 18th. Uh, when the lockdown, a couple days after the lockdown, I figured, what am I going to do? I need, you know, need to do something. I'm, I'm going to go crazy if I can't talk to people. So, and I, you know, somehow I managed to, to talk nonstop. It doesn't seem to be a problem for me. Um, let's see. We have almost the exact same gear setup I see. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't really have, you don't, my, almost everything I do session-wise is in the box. I'm very rare. Well, I mean, aside from acoustics and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, some of that stuff I've got hanging up, I mean, the Fender Tele, that's a 54 reissue. That's a Larrabee that I've got tuned high strung. Um, so, 
I got I bought this specifically to be a high strung, so it's only ever been strung a high strung probably for mm -hmm. 20 years now. Um, and it's not tuned. Um, but basically, the way you high strung a guitar is you take the. What I do is I just take a get a twelve string set and take the high set and put it on the high strung and the regular set I put on a regular guitar. Kind of killing two birds with one stone, killing two guitars with one set of strings. I did a video on this, not only on this guitar, but also a separate video on how to high strung electric and an acoustic. So you don't tune regular strings up, you would never get there without breaking. But what this is a great tool for doubling. Um, I also, uh, yeah, so what else you see? Oh, that, the, the other telly is a baritone. <laughs> so, and then that's an old harmony, uh, the, the the Epiphone was this cheap Epiphone I bought. That that's strung up high strung as well. Um, I got a five string bass. That's a, a Les Paul. Um, my GNLs over here. You know, it, I've got a lot of guitars, um, but they're all different for different uses. So, um, Okay, take care, Josh. But that's kind of fun, you know, because all these normal things you do, like a, an a E7 chord, sound very different on this guitar than it does on it. And so it's a great instrument to double other guitars with. Um, it's also called a poor man's 12 string. Oops. Because if you, if you strum a six string and then double it, you know, record that guitar on top of the six string, play the exact same thing. It kind of sounds like a 12 string. And the cool thing is you can pan one to the left and one to the right. Now you've got a 12 string where every other string is going in two different directions, which is kind of a fun trick. Um, let's see, speaking of gear, where do you get, where did I get that chair? Uh, dang it, where did I get this chair? Well, I, I bought one, I bought this chair and then mine started to squeak and Alex bought one because he liked mine and then he decided to get a different one. So he gave, this is Alex's, I think I got this at Target. I don't think they sell them anymore, but it is, it is comfy and it's adjustable. The height's adjustable. Uh, but I can't have a chair with arms on it because it would get in the way of the guitars. I'd be like, clank, 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 you know, you know how it is playing guitar. So, and so it's, yeah, it's pretty comfy. It gives me a little bit of support here in the lumbar area. Um, and yeah, no, I do. And it, it, like I said, the height's adjustable. I'm already, I'm already as high as it goes. See, now it's as low as it goes. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh. <laughs> Target. <clears throat> I think it would be considered an, an office chair. Um. I don't know if I would say armless. Oh, yes, armless chairs. There we go. Uh, -boom -boom. It would be cool if they still had it because I always worry about it. The other one, for some reason, started making a lot of noise, so I had to get rid of it because I can't make noise when I'm recording acoustics. Okay, I'm not seeing it. I'm not even seeing anything I would replace it with because uh, I think it's more considered less an armless chair and more of an office chair without arms. Let's put it that way. But I'm on page two. No, some cool chairs though. I thought about getting one without wheels, although I really kind of use the one with wheels. I mean, I use the wheels, but I keep rolling over cables and it bums me out because it's an easy way to break a cable. There's some cool chairs here though. Um, I wouldn't call some of these armless. Okay, let me go back to office chair. Yeah, see they got a lot of 
Well, here's one without arms. It's kind of, it, it, kind of without arms. It's not bad. Doesn't have very good reviews though. Uh, here's another one. You know, there's some, some. There's they have they have a few that aren't that, that technically don't have bad arms. They have a little bit of thing right here, which might cause a problem. But um, here's one that's close with arms. So they may still have it. I mean, I the funny thing is I've seen it in a lot of places. Uh, I've seen it in show, TV shows and stuff like that. It's a very popular chair. Oh, okay. Here's one with arms. Well, not quite. Yeah, here this is pretty much called task chair vinyl. Here's a black one with arms. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, there's 39 pages. I'm not going to make you sit through all 39 pages. I was just curious because you asked. <laughs> so see if you can, uh, you know, take a screenshot here. I'll get out of it again, so Holly, so you can take a screenshot. Yeah, I'm looking at Target. That's where I got it. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm pretty sure I got this at Target. Take a screenshot, and then so you can find it. You can see it's kind of getting dirty. Spilled coffee on it. You know, it it's 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 just me in here. It's not like it, but it it's it has enough support, so it's not totally worn out. But um, yeah. So see if you can find it. Um, I like it. Like I said, it, I have to have a chair without arms. And, and the wheel thing is a little bit better now because what I've started doing is I've made my earphone cable a lot shorter and, and made it come from over here instead of coming from here. And when it was coming from here, I kept rolling over it and I was afraid I was going to ruin the cable. And then I have my <laughs> I have my mug, you know, that I designed. The There won't be a quiz on this mug uh, there. And I put the ears in there. So it keeps the, that cable away from my leg. So I, it's only my electric guitar cable now that I roll over every now and then. And I, I've got a short cable there, so that makes it a little less likely. But, you know, it just frustrates me when I'm doing something. Like, I, oh, shoot, I, you know, and I feel like I'm destroying cables because I'm a slob. A week from today, the wanted songs about luck with a date. So Alison Krauss, lucky one, gambler, perhaps. Oh, that's what you're going to do? You're going to do luck songs on your, uh, on your, you're going to do a show? You, got, you do a live stream and then just leave it up, man. Is that generally what you do? You record, well, yeah, you record live, Gary. I've seen your, I've seen your videos. It's, it's, you're not editing. Um, oh, good. You're invite. Oh, okay. It's, yay, Gary. So glad. And, and, Gary, you're in California, right? I know Disney is so mad at, at the governor here, um, Disneyland, because of Disneyland, they can't open Disney. Well, they said, oh, you can open Disneyland if you do these things. And it was like intentionally like things that you can't do. That's awesome. Oh, Wisconsin. That's right. You're in Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah, you guys are probably open. My daughter's been teaching class in class since August in Missouri. They thought she had COVID, but she had strep. So she had to get the COVID test. Uh, she had strep a couple weeks ago, but it, yeah, not COVID. So, and I think she has to get a COVID test every, you know, now and then because she's a teacher. But Beth is still teaching online. Uh, but that's awesome. Yeah, the, nothing gets you better faster than preparing for gigs. Actually getting up in front of people and the fear of making a fool of yourself. So, okay, so Monday, uh, I'm going to keep talking about this Mixolydian business, I think. Sorry. You know, I may do some hybrid stuff. So let me let me think about it. Uh, we may do, I may do what's, you know, I may do a hybrid thing where I go, okay, here's G pentatonic, here's G minor pentatonic, and here's G mixolydian, and here's a hybrid of the two. Um, really not, there's only one note added, to be honest, um, but uh, it, 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 we do it kind of naturally. It's that flat third, which is the B flat and the G. So um, anyway, everybody's, so many of you are sticking with me the whole time. I feel like if I kept talking till midnight tonight, you'd all still be here. <laughs> but it's crazy because uh, Bruce, at one point, I'm looking at this, it spiked at like 55. I don't know what happened. Yeah, 55. Like crazy. Right now I have it says I have 30. Um, so viewer activity. No super chats. Um, yeah, here's, the, here's that mug. <laughs> There's the mug if you want to get it. So it's cool that I can pin merchandise. I need to do, I need to do, uh, 
uh, I've only done white t-shirts. I didn't think about it. I thought you could change the color on when you ordered it, but I don't think you can. So I need to do like white on black. I think that would look cool too. Um, ma hey, ma mano. You got your guitar ready. Well, go back to the beginning of this video. <laughs> Sorry, I'm about to sign off right now. Uh, Franco, let's see. The, they haven't isolated the virus, so somehow a new name for the flu and 90% of the tests are false positive. Yes, I know. It's ridiculous. Uh, so many cases. I mean, it's the crazy thing in Europe. Like, it's spiking like crazy. Like, there's billions of cases, and I'm like, going, well, and they're starting to shut down Europe again. And I'm like, going, yeah, but the hospitals, are they overrun? I'm not, they were at the beginning, and especially in Italy, but I'm not seeing it now. But uh, I don't know. I, 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 I think. I, like I've been saying all along, 10 years from now, they'll write all sorts of really smart books about it. <laughs> and we'll understand it much much better 10 years from now. Uh, hopefully we'll have a, a, a vaccine, but it may be one of those kind of like the flu, you got to take it every year. Uh, they'll have to redo it every year because it, it changes, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, see, Canada, yeah, I know. And we, we have, you know, and, and there's... There's two categories of, of people that died in the U.S. It's died from COVID and died with COVID. And so um, on the CD website, CDC website, um, I think they, that only 6% of the cases are declared that's what killed them. Now, there's, there are a lot of people that would not have died had they not got COVID. So I would say that they died from COVID as well. But they also had a heart condition or they had, just, they had cancer or they had diabetes or you know but I, there was a the lady at my church who's uh uh very overweight um she knows she is um and she's a great lady she's a really smart lady and i love her um and she and her husband both got covid and she's fine i thought oh no when she got when i heard she got it i was like uh oh but she's fine uh, i've been taking vitamin d supplements which helps i think zinc i know zinc is part of the the uh the pack, if you were going to do like hydroxychloroquine, as uh, the uh, what's the is it Z pack or whatever that antibiotic and and zinc, uh, that is a good uh, fighter, but a way to fight it. Uh, but I think I don't know if zinc um, by itself helps at all. But I've been getting more sun, trying to get get sun. It's getting cold here in California. Starting tomorrow, it's going to be chilly. Um, and uh, uh, but I've been getting more vitamin D, so. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad that you're doing live stuff again. It's, it really it just it may, it must make you feel great. It'll be so good getting back. You'll be rusty, but it'll be great getting further. Hey, John, back from the evening dinner. <laughs> I'm still going. No, I'm trying to sign off, but I can't stop thinking about stuff and people are saying things. So, case demic. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the, the, the case numbers are way up there. But again, uh, you know, uh, the swine flu was 2009. We had 60 million cases. And you ask Americans how many people have had COVID, and they would say, oh, it's been, it's a, it's 200 million. I was like, no, it's not even 10 million. So people don't, you know, and I mean, personally, I don't know one person that's died from it. Uh, I know people who know people who have died from it. I know people who have relatives that died from it, but I didn't know them personally. Um, and that's not to say it's not tragical, but um, uh, to quote uh, Tragical Kingdom, uh, to quote, uh, no doubt. Um, but, uh, it's just, you know, it's like you said, the flu, the, uh, you know, and I, I know, uh, uh, Ron Klain, who I, who's, uh, by, uh, Joe Biden's chief of staff. Uh, he, uh, he, I went to high school with him and, uh, he, even he said, you know, they really did everything. They had a lot, all the smartest people in the room in 2009, they did everything wrong. And, and they were just really lucky that swine flu wasn't as deadly. I think only 17,000 people died from the swine flu. Um, they, they said they, they dodged a bullet because they let it get out of hand. They didn't do anything about it. And that, he said that last year before this happened. So it's interesting. Uh, but, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to, uh, oh, thanks. Yeah. And, and Manish, uh, Manish, if you go back, um, if you go back uh, to the beginning of this video, you get some stuff, but you, you can go look at all my live streams, go to my live stream and you can see, I try to put the, the theme of the live stream, basically what I teach in the first 40 to 60 minutes 
is going to be in all caps at the beginning of the title. So it should be fairly easy to find. And if you join the Discord site, which I think I still have saved here on my desk, okay. If you go there, um, you can uh, see a list that I posted in the in the chat. Um, you can see a list that I posted in the chat that has all of the themes for the 133 videos on counting. Um, and also, I have every every diagram that I create here or any piece of paper that I write, I scan and I post up in Tom's bookmarks. So if you go to Tom's bookmarks, you can do that. You can download those and put them on, you know, you can take them and make them, organize them any way you want in, in Word or whatever and print them up and use them yourself. So uh, anyway, <laughs> you're like, well, I'm going to go. It's been two hours. I got to go. Uh, but good seeing or kind of seeing you all. Uh, pretty good, pretty good stream. We, it boosted for some reason there, and it just skyrocketed up for some reason. Uh, but now we're right in the 30. So um, I, I will see you soon. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, say, say a quick hi to Ethan. Hey, Ethan French, how's it going, buddy? <laughs> I, I don't. Did I? Was he in the chat? Did I miss him? Thank you, Franco. 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 Franco, uh, I appreciate you guys, all of you. You help keep me sane through all this. Hopefully, it's over soon. I always said the 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 uh, the vaccine for COVID will be November fourth. Well, we're not there yet, but whatever. You know what I'm saying. Uh, particularly in election years, major presidential election years in America, things everything gets politicized, and that's what happened. Uh, um, so. You know, we'll see. Blue states are going to be digging out of debt for the next 20 years because they shut down and they stayed shut down. So red states are going to have to bail, bail them out. That Bieber posted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Oh, that was we had a great we had a great time. Well, we're still working. So uh, farm farming, uh, farming Baba John. <laughs> so we'll see. I may be going in today to work with them. So uh, we're still doing stuff and uh, we're writing new music. Um, that's the plan. So I will um, I will uh, talk to you Monday, God willing. And uh, you guys take care of yourself. Stay safe. Have fun. Practice. Uh, you're only going to get out of this instrument what you put into it. So, you know, you, you can still do this. And uh, can you be a pro? Probably not. But that's not really most of your goal anyway. You just want to play better. And that's, that's why I'm trying to help you. Um, and the blues is a great place to start. So... Anyway, I'll talk to you soon. God bless. Bye-bye. God willing. Exactly. Inshallah. Use subscribe.